Okay, welcome to a video by Antiques Arena. My name is Walter O'Neill. I'm a UK reseller. I buy and sell antiques, collectibles, anything weird and wonderful in the hope to flip it for a profit. I got an interesting video for you today. I'm, I've been out around charity shops and I have selected 10 really, really interesting things to show you some of the things I've bought recently. I'm going to do a few more of these, but um, I'm going to share with you some of the things I've had. Now, I know I always say you can't get a lot out of charity shops. Now, I don't know whether it's because of all these new HMRC rules uh, where eBay and that have to report all their sellers, like I discussed in the recent video, um, or what, but it seems every time I go to charity shop at the moment, I'm striking gold. And I'm having some really interesting and unusual things. Um, so I, I thought, why not share them with you? If you follow my channel, you know I haven't done a lot of videos because the car boot sales have been shut and I just haven't been doing it and I had other issues as well. But the car boot sales start back up in about two weeks and I can't wait. I'm super excited to get back out to the car boot sales and start buying, selling and making films again for you. So as I said, the purpose of today's video is to share with you 10 items that I've bought from charity shops. I'll tell you what I've paid for them and you'll be able to see what I'm asking and see the items. So I hope you enjoy. Should we have a look? So let's get started. Okay, so this is the first of the items which is a advertising clock for Whitbread Shepherd Arms in Wales. Now this is solid brass as you can see there so this clock front is all solid brass with black and red enamel. You have the Whitbread Arms, Shepherd Arms of Wales and it was produced by Craft Woods of Wales. Now I don't think it's that old. I think it's probably 1990s something like that but it is pub advertising, brewery honor, uh, memorabilia, whatever you want to call it. And it is a real nice thing, solid brass. Now the movement doesn't work in it, but that's not the end of the world. It's a simple quartz battery movement. They're easy to replace. I ain't going to replace it. I'll leave it for the next person because they might just want it as an ornament rather than pass an extra cost on. I did try a new battery, but it didn't work, but they're easy enough to change. Those are, you can buy those on eBay relatively cheap. But I thought a really nice, interesting piece of pub memorabilia or advertising cost me a fiver. And as you can see there, I'm asking 45. But it's in good condition. A little bit of enamel loss on the hands. But, and it, obviously the movement doesn't work. But a nice, nice thing. This was a fabulously cheap group. It is a group of paperweights. All of them are finished in an iridescent finish. So you got an apple, a pear, a swan, and two ducks. And none of them are ugly ducklings, let me tell you. Absolutely beautifully finished in iridescent finish, which is like a rainbow finish. It's hard to capture, but if I zoom in by there, you can see what I mean. That, as you move the pieces, will be all over them. Lovely things, not signed, but heron glass. It would have had little sticker labels on it. This entire set cost me three pounds. They didn't even cost me a pound a piece. There's five paperweights there, and they didn't cost me a pound each. Um, I didn't really know how much heron glass was selling for, but I had a little look, and people are asking like twenty pound for one little duck. Um, so I thought forty quid is you know it's less than a tenner a piece, uh, considerably less. So we'll have a go there. This is my favourite find of the week. Now, I wasn't 100% what it was when I bought it. I put it on a paperweight group on Facebook and asked for a bit of help because Perthshire have done them and Murano done them. And what I mean by done them is Millie Fiori glass paperweights with pictures of animals inside or images of animals inside. And what I mean by Millie Fiori is this cane coming around the outside. So it's a Millie Fiori paperweight. And then you have this image of a Siamese cat on the inside. Now, that's not a piece of paper stuck on the bottom. This is inside the paperweight. You'll see now as we move to the different pictures. It is an absolute stunning thing. You can see there the scale, the size of it next to a normal paperweight. 
Now, I'd never seen one before. When I bought it, I, uh, I got quite excited and I instantly started researching. And I pulled my Persia book out, which I've got just by there. It's a fabulous book. I'll show you the book in a moment. If anybody does deal in Persia paperweights or any other paperweights and you want the book, then it's a fabulous book to get. Anyway, I'm asking 145 for it. Now, the reason behind that is that i done my research. And there are three available online. One available at 195, uh, listed as Perthshire slash Marano. Then there's another one listed at 395 as a Klitschi, Bakra, um, yeah, I think it was a Klitschi or Bakra paperweight they added as, with question mark. They are Murano, they're vintage Murano, and 145 is undercutting everybody else by a considerable amount. But I absolutely love it. It's a massive three and a half inches in diameter, where your normal paperweight is inch and a half, two inches, two and a half inches. This is three and a half inches in diameter, makes a big difference, and it is stunning and perfect. And it cost me a tenner. A tenner for that is absolutely amazing. Then I had these, and, well, what can I say? They are, it's a pair. It's Henry VIII and Elizabeth I. They're produced from Bisque Porcelain in Germany around 1880, 1890. Here's Henry VIII. Now, he's lost a little bit of red off his coat. I assume, it could have been like that, but I'm assuming he's lost the red off his coat. Worn. You can see the porcelain there, Elizabeth I, and there we have it. Now, I'm asking £100 for the pair. However, there is an identical pair up for over £300. There's only one other pair I could find, and they are asking over £300 for them as German porcelain. Now, they cost me £3 for the pair. I know. It's fabulous. So at these profit margins, I can afford to take an offer if need be. I do have the make an offer option on the website. This one is, I buy quite a lot of these, believe it or not. They are from a company called um, Military Replica or replica.com, something like that. And basically they specialize in producing pieces for military personnel as in trophies, retirement statues, ice buckets, things like that. Now this is an ice bucket. They're produced in plastic with obviously the printed paper going all the way around and then obviously the ribbon to make it look like a drum. And it's for the 4th Prince of Wales on Gurkha Rifles. And it's an ice bucket. Let me share with you the images. The back half of it is like a mirror. So you have obviously all the writing on this one. Prince of Wales there, 4th Battalion, France and Flanders, 1914-15. to um, That would say Gurkha rifles behind a Gurkha, but it's hidden by the strap. It's in good condition, lovely thing. I paid £15 for it, but I sell these ice buckets regularly between £40 and £60, depending on the regiment. Some of them are more desirable than others. But still, fifteen pounds. It's going to up. It's gone up for forty-five. In good condition. I don't think it's going to last long. This was another star buy. I absolutely love this. Now this is, in my opinion, nineteen twenties, nineteen thirties. It's a combination of a bit of transfer printing and hand painting. It's Swiss. And this is the Rhinefall Waterfalls. Um, and it is a very, very famous tourist attraction or scene in Switzerland. Anyway, I think, in my opinion, this piece was a souvenir piece in the 1920s or 30s. Now, it's not a plate. And it's got something hidden about it. So, first of all, it's a comport. If we get to it. But it is also musical, so it has a Swiss music box 
in the base. So obviously it plays a tune when you lift it up and it's nice to see some of the old labels still on there. There you go. Can't even begin to try and read that. Probably tells you the tune it plays. There's a nice image of it. It's a beautiful thing. Now if you collect music boxes or anything along these lines, this is quite a rare thing. Now I did do some research and I couldn't find another musical compot or tazza. As I say, it's Swiss. I think it's a souvenir piece from the 20s or 30s. It could be a bit later. Um, I couldn't find another to attribute it in age to see what other people thought. Could be as late as 50s, I would think, but I've put it down as 20s to 30s. But it cost me £3 and I've put it up at 55 and I still think there's a profit on it for the next person at that. This was a carnival glass bowl uh, produced by Northwood in a beautiful deep amber, amethyst rather, with the iridescent finish all over it. Nice floral design. Wait till you see these. Uh, it's called wishbone, but wait till you see. Look at the. This is what I was talking about earlier. The iridescent finish. Look, it's like a rainbow all over it. Really, really nice. Now, carnival glass is hit and miss. If you ever got a piece of carnival glass, you want to identify the pattern, go to dotty.com or just Google search dotty.carnival or carnival glass and dotty and it'll come up. It's one of the biggest and best websites I've seen on identifying patterns, shapes, sole prices, everything. You can search by maker, you can search by pattern. So if you've got a carnival glass bowl and you've no idea who made it, but you know like, it's got like strawberries on it or something, you can go to Carnival Glass and just type in strawberry and search through all the different bowls that have got strawberries in them. It's a fabulous website. And if you need to, just go Dotty. I think it's Dotty.com. Um, but just search Dotty and Carnival Glass and you'll find it. Beautiful thing this is. Let me just share the photos. On the feet, ruffled bowl. It's almost like the Olympic rings on the back. Huh? But a really, really nice thing in good condition. And again, it cost me three pounds. Absolutely love carnival glass. Now, some carnival glass, if you can get Vaseline or something rare, you're in the hundreds. So not all carnival glass is rubbish. This was nice. A bit of art pottery, German art pottery, or it's a salt glaze stoneware, if you like, but it's um it's not four vases stacked on top of each other. This is a cluster vase. So there's four vases, but they're all stuck together. So they've produced four identical vases, and then thought, nah, I'm just going to stick them all together before I uh, heat them up and cook them. And they've created this cluster vase or epern vase. And it's got these sort of masks um, all over them. Nice thing by Westerwald. I don't know why that keeps going off like that. But a lovely uh, vase nonetheless. There are impressed numbers on there. Um, but yeah, in good condition. And this one cost me £1.75p. It was half price in the sale. It was up at £3.50 and I did half price sale for £1.75. And it's up at 65 This is the only piece that didn't come in on the charity shop. And um, this was one that I listed that I've had for a little while. I bought it privately off somebody walking on a car boot sale last year. And I've kept it this long because I've been trying to research it. Now, it's very similar in style to the Tudor Rose, which you see on military insignia. But the Tudor Rose has five pedals. It's made of bronze and it's almost three kilos. It's a big cap of some description. Now, I have some theories myself of what I think it is, but I definitely think it's military, and I think it's nautical, because of the material it made. Now, if you look to the centre, you can see that little hole. Now, I think there may have been a bar coming out of that hole, which then attached something to it. Now, one of my think thoughts was, or my, my, my theory, on, or one of them is, that it's a tampion, which is a plug for the end of a cannon. So it would have maybe had a big spike or bar coming out the centre with a cork on there. And then this would be the end cap you push into the cannon when you're not using it. It's heavy enough, it's big enough. Um, 
and it also has this sort of castling effect around the rim so it locks into something that's my thought anyway i think it's going to be either a cap to go on something maybe a wheel a cannon cover something along them lines but i definitely think military and i think it's old real old but i couldn't put a true value on it because i couldn't i just couldn't figure out what it is and i've asked dozens and dozens of dealers i've even put it on uh, antique facebook pages and everything and nobody could figure out what it is so it's one of those mystery items that could be worth hundreds and hundreds but at the moment it's being sold purely as a decorative bronze piece and it's beautifully cast now i've got it up at 95 i think i paid 25 for it 15 25 something like that i can't remember without getting my books out um but it intrigued me when i saw it originally it's beautifully cast beautiful patina on it and it just looks military there's that hole. But look at that patina on the inside of that. It's got age. It's not a newly cast thing. Another charity shop find. We have a uranium Vaseline glass vase. Victorian. Um, it's a handled vase which has a single handle. And these glow under black light. Now you can see there in my picture, you can see the actual black light I'm using to make it glow and it glows this luminous color i'll show you what it looks like without the black light that is beautiful color there that's what it looks like without the black light it's almost a cranberry interior with the white vaseline around the rim and then this almost just off clear a little murky green maybe off clear uh handle and feet and then obviously it glows now, I'd say it's about 18, 80, 80, 90. It's a beautiful Victorian jug. And if you collect uranium glass, it is a stunner. The downside you have, if you sell on eBay, you've got to be very careful. Don't use uranium in the title. Just put glass vase or something in the title because eBay destroy uranium glass. You can't ship it. Even though it's harmless, you can't ship it. They won't allow uranium. It's classed as a hazardous substance. Let me share that um, book with you a minute now that I was going to share. This is Complete Guide to Perthshire Paperweights. Here's the ISBN. And every so often these come onto eBay for about 10 to £15 pounds for the book. And they have got almost every... Perthshire paperweight produced up to I think it's 2000 something like that it doesn't come all the way up to now but anything after 84 I think has got a Perthshire cane in there anyway so you could identify it from that but you get all the PP numbers in you you get all the special one-offs the limited editions the Christmas series is everything so if you like paperweights that's a fabulous book to get I'm going to do a vlog over the next few days because I've got some really exciting news to share with the website. I've done loads of improvements. I've done loads of vlogs, log, blogs rather, listed loads of pieces. I think I've done 60, 50 or 60 listings just this week. I can't keep up with the amount I'm buying at the moment. I literally, I can't walk outside the door without coming back with 20 or 30 pieces. And I just bought myself a beautiful chinoiserie late 18th early 19th century grandfather clock it's absolutely gorgeous it's not for sale it's going in my office as an ornament um, when i'm filming then it's coming out that beautiful chinoiserie uh grandfather clock in the background absolutely love the thing as soon as i saw it i thought i gotta have it bit of money but i thought oh, do you know what i absolutely loved it and i gotta see if it runs as well and if it runs oh my god i can't wait so, yeah, loads and loads of things going on. Boot sales starting back. So you'll start seeing me at the car boot sales. Check out, I've, uh, I've had my web developer design me a list or a series of pages on the website under the heading services. Um, I'm going into house clearances again this year in a big way. and I'm going to film the house clearances. So when I go into a house, I'm going to actually film the digging through looking for the things so that's going to be really interesting getting to get to see firsthand as i dig the stuff out of house clearances 
and it's not a question of they won't let me do it because the only house clearance says I'm going to take on are people who accept the fact I'm going to film. Uh, all I'll do is make sure there's no photographs, no paperwork, and I won't identify the house. It's just going to be like showing the rooms and the drawers and the boxes, that type of thing. Um, but it should really make for an interesting video. Anyway, check out the services uh, page on the website. Um, some really interesting things on there. I'm going to do a vlog just on that. And check out my blogs. I literally have wrote a dozen blogs in the last few months. And some really interesting ones. And if you are working on eBay and you're not 100% legit, I suggest you go and watch the video I've done. i done two. i done an original video where I discussed... HMRC rules and regulations and DWP rules and regulations and then I've done a little bit of a live chat with Nick so they're both on my channel as well so check them out because I think you'll find them very very interesting don't know what you thought of the pieces I've uh, shown you today but that's the sort of range of stuff I'm buying at the moment it's really interesting it's really wonderful things and it's coming in for literally nothing and now if this is a sign of what's to come this year I'm really, really excited. I think the biggest problem I'm going to have this year is how many storage tins am I going to fill? <laughs> anyway, I have to excuse the mess in the office. I am literally sorting my office out. I've only just I haven't long had my office back. I had to give it up as a bedroom uh, when one of my children come back from university. So I'm now turning it back into an office. That's why I bought myself the grandfather clock. And I'm in a mess, but I'm sorting through it. And it'll be lovely and clean and tidy now within a week or two. And back organised. I just can't wait. More films, more buying, more listening, more everything. It's just going to be great fun. And I'm super excited to be back at the car boot sales digging out treasures. Let me know what you think. Do you have a favourite? What do you think of that Murano cat paperweight? I know I'd never seen one before. And I got loads and loads of really good pieces I've listed on lately. You'd be surprised. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you soon. Take care.